Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for connecting to our webinar. Uh, today we are celebrating the World Statistics Day, uh, which is a global event uh, guided by the United Nations uh, Statistical uh, Commission. The theme of this uh, uh, day uh, this year is connecting uh, the world with statistics we can trust. And uh, along with many other organizations, we at IFLA uh, also prepared uh, this event. Uh, to mark uh, the, the Statistics Day. And the theme overall around the globe uh, is, uh, is to reflect uh, on trust, uh, to talk about uh, authoritative uh, statistics, uh, innovation, and uh, generally about the public good uh, of, uh, of statistics. So, and during this event, we will mainly be talking about uh, IFLA's work, uh, generally about the library map of the world, and also other data that, that is available through the development and access to information report. Uh, and we'll discuss uh, about uh, what we can do with that. So we will be uh, two speakers today. Uh, I am Christine Pabars Ramiresa. I'm IFLAS uh, member engagement uh, officer, uh, and I'm taking care uh, about the library map of the world uh, at IFLA. Uh, I am joined to get, uh, today by Stephen Weiber. Uh, Stephen is uh, IFLAS policy and advocacy manager and uh, very knowledgeable when it comes to use of data in advocacy, uh, analysis of data, uh, library data in the, in the context of uh, development. And we will both uh, will share uh, the experience uh, we have uh, and hopefully we'll engage in an interesting conversation uh, with you all uh, today. So before we uh, dig into the topic, uh, some of the housekeeping information, uh, this event is being recorded. That also includes recording the chat. So the recording and transcript will, after the webinar, will be posted on IFLAS uh, uh, website. And uh, we will also use the, the chat for that uh, later on. So my, your microphones uh, and videos have been muted uh, for this event, but there are two ways of uh, interacting with us. Uh, so you can uh, use the chat for general comments and feedback, and if you need help, uh, and you please use the question and answer option to ask your questions uh, during the whole webinar. You can also vote for other interesting questions asked by others, and uh, we will prioritize these. Uh, and we'll get back to the questions at the end uh, of our presentation. So we prepared uh, uh, like three topics, uh, and this will be the sequence of them. Uh, our agenda consists of, uh, first we will talk about the data sources, um, uh, the library map of the world and uh, DA2I report and some others. Uh, then after that, we'll spend some time to demonstrate uh, how we at IFLA also used those existing data sources and uh, what analysis are possible out of the data we have at the moment. And uh, at the end, we'll finish uh, with uh, talking about some of the advocacy opportunities for using this data when it comes to, uh, to library advocacy in power for development. So before we start, uh, we also want to uh, learn a little bit uh, about you. And uh, that's why I'm launching now the poll. And uh, please let us know uh, in which uh, type of library or library body do, do you have the most experience? So, and I can see that the votes are coming in. Uh, I'll wait a little bit more. Almost all have voted already couple more seconds and then I will close the, the poll. And here, here we are. So uh, the majority of us are from academic and research libraries, but also public libraries and special libraries present and also library associations. So welcome uh, to the webinar. So we'll have a very interesting discussion because of the mix of people that are here today and another one before we start. So how often do you use data in your own work? Uh, we are also interested in learning a little bit more about that. 
And there is a, I can already see. Let me give you a couple more seconds. Three, two, one, and let's close this poll. And here we can see that, that the experience is very, and uh, this will also contribute to, to our discussion today. So thank you for your feedback and engagement in this. And uh, to continue, I will start uh, uh, with the first topic uh, to talk about uh, data sources. And in the beginning, I will talk about the library map. So the library map of the world, uh, it started, the project itself, it started in, in, in 2017. And actually a couple of months ago, the website uh, uh, celebrated its third anniversary. It's not so old yet, but in those years it, uh, it experienced tremendous engagement from the library field. And the project started uh, from the need uh, of not only IFLA, but the national library associations and any library around the world who want to uh, advocate for libraries. Uh, so the problem was that there was, uh, there was a lack of, of basic statistics and uh, around the world, uh, the, the situations with statistics vary. And we started to build uh, this website uh, to have the basic statistics available, collected and available for anyone uh, who needs them for the library uh, advocacy. So what do we have here? So we have the number of libraries. Uh, we have libraries with internet access. Then we have also library staff and volunteers. We have a registered number of registered users and uh, those uh, visitors uh, to libraries. And uh, last but not least, we also have uh, data on uh, loans, both the physical and electronic loans. This data is being collected uh, across all library types, uh, which, are, which are organized now in six uh, categories, which you see on the left of the screen, uh, starting from the national libraries, academic, public, community, school, and uh, other library types. At this moment in time, uh, you can find uh, some uh, data from 133 countries uh, around the world. And those in color are those countries where, where we have uh, that data available. So the good thing about all of this is that you can not only navigate on the website itself, uh, by, by browsing through different metrics and, and seeing uh, results displayed on the screen. Uh, but now you can also download all this data uh, in the format of CSV file. And uh, this will be uh, accompanied also by the definitions of all the, uh, the, the library types, as well as the metrics, and uh, will give you a better understanding of uh, how to actually read this data. At IFLA, we are not doing this alone, and uh, we are doing this, uh, and the way how we work is that we have uh, what we call data contributor in each of those countries. So on the side, there is a separate uh, page, uh, which is called contributors, and you can find where uh, that data comes from. Uh, if you search for your country or just click on the map and uh, it will bring you a window where you can identify uh, which organization provided uh, these uh, statistics uh, to the library map of the world. And of course, situations vary from country to country. Some data are, are uh, collected by the National Statistical Office, for example. Uh, some are, are, are is a result of the survey, uh, which is uh, uh, done by the National Library or by the National Association. And, uh, and if you are interested to learn more and beyond the statistics that the library map has, uh, you can uh, click on the, on, the, uh, on the organization's website and, and, and uh, contact them for more information. So here I also want to say a big thank you to all of our contributors because we collecting data, as we all know, uh, is not, uh, it take, it's a lot, lot of effort uh, here. And uh, currently uh, on the map, you will find more than 170 organizations 
mainly national libraries and national library associations, but also other organizations uh, who have engaged in the library map of the world and who, is, who are interested uh, to provide this, the existing uh, statistics uh, from their country and, uh, and uh, update uh, the map uh, with the newer and, uh, and more statistics uh, uh, every year. Uh, here, the, next, I also want to mention that it's not only on homepage uh, where you can find uh, data when it comes to the library map of the world. Something else that I want to mention are the country profiles. And this part of the, of the library map website, uh, we started to develop, develop a couple of years ago. And uh, currently you'll find uh, 22 countries uh, with um, a little bit more extensive information about the library field. And what is it that you can find here? So you'll get an overview of the library system with even more detailed statistics on different library types, which are maybe not, uh, uh, which are aggregated uh, on the homepage. But uh, you will also find uh, information with links uh, to all the organizations uh, uh, in the country who deal uh, with, uh, within the library field. You'll find, find full links to full texts of uh, different policy documents and uh, library laws. You'll also find information about education and events and uh, many more. But why I'm mentioning it here uh, in this webinar is because a separate uh, place within the country profile uh, is dedicated uh, to statistics. And here uh, is not only library statistics, uh, it will give you a different view of, uh, of the same performance metrics which you will find on the home page. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, you will also find uh, what we call contextual indicators. And uh, this data comes from external uh, data sources, like, uh, for example, World Bank uh, data platforms or ITU databases. And these are uh, the contextual indicators that will talk more about the development areas, uh, like, for example, uh, information infrastructure or education and literacy, innovation and skills. And for those countries which uh, has country profiles, it's a place of, uh, of a quick reference where you can quickly find uh, what is the, the adult literacy rate, for example, or how many internet users there are uh, in that country. And will give you not only the country's uh, figures, but also uh, uh, you'll be able to compare it to the regional averages uh, as well as um, the world average and uh, will provide more uh, we'll put library data in, in the context, in the, in the greater context um, of the development. So that was the short overview of the library map of the world. And I invite you to just go online and explore yourself and find uh, what is there for your country uh, and uh, compare it to other countries. But today uh, we talk about libraries and development. And when it comes to putting uh, libraries data in the context, uh, we also want to give you some tips of where to look for that uh, contextual data. And uh, I want to just shortly mention three of uh, authoritative and trustful sources, which are also easy to use. And I'll just quickly walk you through, uh, through them. So first thing I already mentioned that those uh, contextual indicators that you will find on the library map, they come, uh, many of them are imported uh, from the World Bank uh, data platform. And this is the, the data source that I really want to recommend. It's very easy to use. It has a very good search. And on the screen is just an example. I search for the literacy rates. Uh, and what it gives to you is, uh, is a different uh, ways of how you can look at this, uh, this data from around the world, uh, or you can add also your country and see it in, in, in a perspective. You can see the lines or bars or put things on the map. But uh, when it comes to analyzing it, you might be also interested to, to download uh, the CSV file or the Excel file uh, and do your own 
analysis later on. And uh, another thing also to mention that, uh, that the World Bank uh, data platform is uh, available also in other languages. It's not only English, but you can also look and search in Spanish or in French and, and the other uh, languages. Another uh, source of, of this contextual data I want to mention is belongs to the United Nations and uh, it's a United Nations uh, data portal. And here uh, is uh, the data that they have inside comes from different organizations around the world. Like for example, this is the place where you can find uh, also the UNESCO's uh, different uh, types of data and comes from different other organizations. So here is interesting thing and easy to use that you can browse through topics and uh, or you can browse through different sources uh, and uh, get to, to the data and locate the data that you might be interested in. Uh, this example is adult literacy rate and uh, you can either preview the data on the screen or you can view that data in more depth and also download the uh, the Excel or CSV file for your own uh, analysis. And last uh, but not least, uh, because of it today we are talking about uh, libraries and development or, or data for the development of libraries is that I also want to encourage you to explore more uh, the, the separate database that the United Nations are, are hosting, which is dedicated to the sustainable development goals uh, and the SDGs indicators. And it's also is easy to use. You can browse through the list of different uh, goals and targets and locate the indicators that you're interested in. Uh, and it will give you the full list of uh, countries uh, which has uh, data on, uh, on these um, selected uh, indicators and uh, even the, the historical data from different uh, years. And, and this also, um, yeah, it's interesting to follow up the, the development uh, during the years. So the SDGs will still uh, be with us for, for the next 10 years. And um, that, that this is the source of, of information where you can, can kind of uh, follow up the global uh, development uh, in all the 17 SDGs. So this is the place where I will hand uh, to Stephen and he will talk a little bit more about other sources we have at IFLA. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to switch over to my screen. So you should have that up on the screen now. Excellent. I think we're all there. So um, thank you for Christina for, for setting everything out so far. I'm going to dig a little bit more, as, as said, into um, the issues that, that the other data sources that are available from IFLA. Um, the first of these is the Development and Access to Information Report, or DA2I report. This is something that we've produced twice now in, in 2017 and 2019. It's a direct result of the long declaration that we put out on libraries access to information and development in 2014. And at the heart of this is a collection of indicators which look to measure the different aspects of meaningful access to information. For us, those are connectivity, equality, skills and rights. So this is important that clearly being able to get online be able to access all the information that's there on the internet is important, but we need to be thinking firstly about, is everyone able to access it? It's not acceptable if only some groups can. We need to be thinking about whether everyone has the skills necessary to make use of the information. And then do they have the rights necessary to be able to create, share, exchange, develop information themselves. Now in the current SDG for indicators framework, Metrics around access to information are arguably both scattered and sometimes incomplete. And so it's important that we have this way of bringing all this information together into one place. This makes it possible, for example, to track what's going on, to identify priorities for countries, and in time to start to show trends and tendencies. Now, there's a whole database of information available, much of which you can also find on the World Bank site, Christina mentioned, as well as on the uh, UN site. But I wanted to share a couple of the tools being developed. 
Now, the first of these is our, we can move something so I can see it more clearly. Um, the first of these are our DA2I country analyses. Now, we've produced these for about 20 countries so far, mainly linked to voluntary national reviews, and I'll talk a little bit more, more about this later. These analyses bring together indicators from each of those four pillars of the DA2I framework in order to get a sense of how any one country is doing across these, including in comparison both of those regional and global averages. In effect, in these charts, it's better to be nearer 100, the outside of the circle, as this would represent, for example, 100% network coverage, 0% poverty, 100% literacy, or a perfect score on freedom of discussion. So as a first example from Mexico, we can see that performance is around the average. It's slightly better than the global and regional averages on the access to 3G networks, gender equality, freedom of discussion, worse than the regional average on numbers of people with mobile broadband subscriptions, internet use and civil liberties, and worse than both the regional and the global averages on poverty. Meanwhile, in India, there's a more mixed picture. There's really good performance and very positive scores on all aspects of rights compared to both global or regional average. However, on connectivity, um, India and indeed South Asia as a whole, uh, India and South Asia as a whole is some way below the global average. Um, while poverty rates are comparable with global figures, gender equality and the share of young people who are not in employment, education or training is worse. On skills, the picture is mixed. India does relatively well on youth literacy, but scores lower than the global average on the skills component of the ICT Development Index. This suggests that, for example, in India, a key goal will have to be to get more people online, in particular women, in order to help them take advantage of the possibilities that the internet brings. Now, these country sheets also include Library Map of the World data, and these make the connections between the availability of libraries and country priorities. For example, in India, it's possible to say that given that the country has such a wide and such a dense public library network, one goal for government, if it wants to get more people online in an accessible way, would be to make sure that all of these libraries are connected and are able to provide internet access out into communities. Now, we'll be producing more of these sheets for the next round of voluntary national reviews, and as I said, more on this later. I also wanted to encourage you to take a look at the DA2I dashboard that have been produced by our partners at the Technology and Social Change Group at the University of Washington. Now, these allow you to look at a different aspect of the DA2I framework again, but this time to look over time, including in relation to regional averages. For example, the indicator here looks at the percentage of women graduating from STEM, science, technology, uh, science, technology, and maths related courses, engineering and maths related courses. This shows, for example, that Algeria is seeing a gentle increase over time, broadly in line with that in the, nor in the Northern Africa region as a whole. So I encourage you to take a look. You can see there are tabs around connectivity, freedom, and gender in particular. And this helps you really get a sense of whether where your country is going, are you keeping up? Are you getting ahead of the region of the global averages or are you falling behind? It's a great way of identifying priorities that maybe libraries can help to resolve. So now I wanted to get a little bit onto the subject of analysis and to hand back to Christina. Yes, thank you so much, Stephen. Um, this is the place where we, we covered the first uh, agenda item. Uh, we talked a little bit about the data sources that IFLA has, uh, both the Library Map of the World and Development uh, uh, and Access to Information report, and uh, we really encourage you to look at those and uh, also at some of those external data sources. But before we move uh, to the next uh, two topics, I want to launch another poll and see if you are still with us. Uh, and we want to learn now from you how much experience do you have of using data uh, in advocacy? So how often do you actually deal with data for your work? Uh, and uh, 
yeah the votes are coming in i will still keep it open for a couple more seconds i think we need to get a couple more so the biggest uh, half already voted so and i'm gonna close the the poll now and here is what we have uh, we have people with a lot of experience, uh, with some uh, some experience, but I I think it's we are quite uh, experienced here as well, and uh, uh, we will be interested also to learn from your experiences, and that's why I want to encourage you to also uh, give your feedback and tell about your experiences in the chat, uh, and uh, also ask your questions in question and answer. Uh, option uh, box. So I'm giving it back to Stephen now, uh, and um, he we will talk uh, from now on a little bit more of what uh, analysis have been actually possible uh, because we have the library map of the world data, we have DA2I, and uh, what are those things that we found out and, and how we can uh, use it in advocacy? What are the opportunities? Stephen, please. Okay. Thank you, Christina. I'm just going to, yep. So, exactly. So we're going to get on to, so as said, so we, we, we've had these sources so far and what we're going to try and do now is show a little bit about what we think is possible. Now, I, I would underline that at IFLO, we're not complete data experts. We're not complete statisticians. What we're interested in doing here is showing what is possible with the data we have. And of course, to really try and get you interested and encourage you, encourage your colleagues to really engage and think about, well, what else can you do? How much further can you go? So a key first step here is to start combining data sets because these allow us to discover new things about our field, about how libraries may relate to wider trends and tendencies. As highlighted, all of this data can be downloaded in Excel or CSV format. So there are lots of possibilities to play with it, see what you find out. So to give you some examples, the first thing we can do is look at libraries and population. Now, this is data that's already available through the library map of the world, through those contextual indicators. Now, what we've done in this case is simply take World Bank data about population and library map of the world data about the numbers of public and community libraries and library workers. Now, you can see from this graph, this chart, from the blue columns, the number of public libraries and public and community libraries per 100,000 people. And you can see that Eurasia, Euro Eastern Europe and Central Asia, has the largest number of libraries per 100,000 people, just over 20. Europe comes just behind with Asia, Oceania, and North America, more or less all at the global average. However, you can see that we get a different view when we look at the number of workers. These are the red dots, and you read these figures on the right-hand axis. While Eurasia is still top, North America is now second in terms of the highest number of library, library workers per 100,000 people. In effect, and Europe is only fourth. In effect, we can see that in North America and Oceania, there may tend to be fewer libraries, but they tend to be much better staffed. While in Europe, there are more libraries, but these tend to be smaller. Now, of course, these are regional averages and there's huge variation. In the Czech Republic, for example, we can see that there are nearly 60 public libraries per 100,000 people, which is a lot of libraries. We can do something similar for academic libraries. Here, we can see that the number of libraries per 100,000 people is relatively similar in Europe, Eastern Europe and Central Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean, North America and Asia. However, North America is way ahead of the field when it comes to numbers of librarians. So again, they're similar sized libraries, but North American libraries are much, tend to be much better staffed. We can carry out similar analyses, for example, looking at other factors, such as the surface area of countries and other of the contextual indicators that Christina set out. On average, from this, we can find that there's one public or community library for every 254 square kilometers. However, in Europe, it's only one for every 59, and in Asia, one for every 85. Now, all of this data we're happy to share, and I will give you a link to the blog where a lot of this is set out later. Interestingly, we can also, though, cross data about libraries with indicators of broader social issues. Now, 
We also make a lot of use here of OECD data, and this is one of the sources you can use and which we can download. Clearly, one of the issues with OECD data is that it doesn't cover the entire world, and this is a global challenge that's recognized in the SDGs, but we do need to get better at getting data from everywhere. So in this graph, you can see that we're crossing data about numbers of public commu and community libraries and library workers on the vertical axis with OECD data on social mobility. And that refers to the chances of someone whose parents fall into one category of work being able to move into another. Can you move up the social ladder? And the higher the figure is, the further you are to the right, the higher the level of social mobility. Now, what we can see here is that there is, while there isn't much connection, it seems, between the number of libraries and mobility, there is a positive link between the number of public and community librarians, library workers, and mobility. This fits in quite nicely with the idea, with one of the arguments that we often make, that the presence of librarians gives the possibility to people to discover possibilities, to learn, to actually develop, to do something, to do better for themselves, if at all possible. This is, argue, this is a very positive argument. Of course, in this kind of analysis, we need to be clear that correlation is not necessarily causality. There may well be other factors at work. A society that invests in librarians may well invest in other services that boost social mobility. Nonetheless, this fact, that in countries where there are more library workers, there's more social mobility, is a useful fact for our advocacy. We can also cross Library Map of the World data about the number of public and community libraries offering internet access with OECD data about differences in internet use between groups. In this case, between those who are in work and those who are not because they're unemployed or retired. Here, we can see that in those countries which have more public and community act libraries offering internet access, the gap in internet use is smaller. This is important as internet access can be a powerful way of finding new skills or work opportunities. And for unemployed people, being cut off can make their situation worse and mean that they end up being excluded permanently. Finally, to take an example from the academic library field, um, we used a combination of UNESCO, OECD, and Library Map of the World data to calculate figures, both for the number of researchers any single academic library worker needs to serve, and how many publications each researcher produces a year, and we compared the two. The result in this graph appears to indicate that when you have fewer researchers per library worker, i.e. that each library worker can dedicate more effort to each researcher, there also seem to be more publications. Clearly, as before, correlation does not always mean causality, and there may be other factors at play here. Nonetheless, as before, this is a useful link to point out as part of a wider argument. I'd underline, as I said before, we have lots more data along these lines on our blog, and you can see the link here, and we'll also put this in the chat later. And of course, in all of these cases, we're more than happy to share the data, the Excel files on which these graphs are based. Finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about data use. Now, last week we held a storytelling workshop, and in this we made the point that stories are really important because they have the power to grab attention, to make people want to give their time. But it's crucial to be able to back up these arguments with statistics. This can be particularly important if you're looking to engage with funders who will want to be able to see numbers in order to be sure that they are investing in something serious. It may seem simple, but even just being able to say how many libraries there are in your country, how many workers, how many visitors, and so on, can give additional credibility. And certainly other organizations involved in advocacy looking for support or funding will be doing the same. Of course, it's great if you can come up with some sort of killer statistic. And for example, in the past, we've seen great examples, such as the one used in passing the Marrakesh Treaty, where it was underlined that only 1% of books are available in accessible formats in developing countries. Or the statistic from the OECD that children who read more outside of school tend to be a year ahead in reading school, scores, it's a powerful figure. Clearly, we need to be careful here and make sure that we're not claiming that our statistics mean something that they don't. There are nonetheless many ways to use data in speeches, briefings, editorials, during appearances on TV or radio, on social media and beyond. 
you of course will have the best sense of what works in your country but we wanted to focus on one specific opportunity and these are something i've mentioned a couple of times before the voluntary national reviews that take place in the context of the united nations 2030 agenda now these are supposed to, these are supposed to offer an opportunity to countries to look back to think about all they're doing to deliver on the sustainable development goals and set out their priorities importantly they're supposed to be based on consultation with stakeholders so i would encourage you to look at our overall guide which provides more background and we'll continue to, and just as last year we will run a monthly series of briefings on different aspects as part of this though, in relevance to this webinar, is that data is a crucial part of this. Because once you've identified who's in charge of your voluntary national review, once you have an idea of what the process is, a really crucial step will be to get your own contribution data, your own data that you can present, showing what you're contributing now and showing what more could be done if survivors were better supported. Now in this context, you will want to have a think about what you can show in relation to these. These will be the sustainable development goals that are in focus next year. And I'll leave them up on the screen for a short moment, just so you can take a look. But you thought it's one, two, three, eight, 10, 12, 13, 16, and 17. So there's plenty of scope to think about how you can show data related to what your libraries are doing. So now I wanted to hand back to Christina um, in order to set out some concrete steps on where to go next. Christina. Yes, thanks, Stephen. So, we gave you some ideas of what you can do. So what would be the potential next steps uh, for you if you're interested in, in playing with data and finding how to use it in advocacy? So the first, we, 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 brought, we want to invite you to explore what data you have. Uh, not only in source resources that uh, we presented today, uh, like uh, development and uh, access to information report uh, or the library map of the world, but you can also explore what additional data that will help you uh, to, to demonstrate uh, the, the contribution is available in your country uh, out of this scope. Uh, so the next step then would be when you have the library data, so how to put it in the context, uh, to try uh, out uh, yourself, uh, finding these contextual databases and exploring what uh, uh, interesting comparisons and uh, correlations uh, you might find about your own country. Um, and then uh, last but not least, uh, when you've uh, found uh, an interesting point uh, for the argument, uh, then it's, uh, it's the next step is to try and demonstrate uh, your contribution by engaging really in the national processes taking place uh, uh, in your countries uh, uh, in, in preparations for the voluntary national reviews and, uh, and the development uh, in general. So at this point, uh, we are ready to take some questions uh, from you. And uh, as uh, I'm looking at the question and answer box, uh, there is one question from Dahlia uh, about the availability of statistics uh, from Middle East countries uh, and Lebanon in particular. Uh, I will first an answer about the library map. Uh, there are several Middle East countries uh, engaged uh, in the library map uh, project. Uh, but you will not find all of them online yet. And that's something that I actually had to mention in the beginning when I talked about contributors. Uh, so you see now there are 130 more countries uh, online with some data, but something to mention is that there are more than 30 other countries which are not on the map yet, but which has uh, initiatives in their country uh, which they take to gather and collect uh, some of those uh, basic uh, library statistics like the number of libraries and, and users and visitors and so on. And talking about the Lebanon specifically, uh, Lebanon is among uh, those countries engaged uh, in the process uh, and we work with Lebanese uh, Library Association uh, to make it possible one day to put the statistics both uh, also but also the, the country profile online. So I encourage you to email uh, me at librarymap.ifla.org and uh, we can put you in touch and, and uh, see how we can help each other to, 
uh, to improve the data. But I also know that there are uh, Middle East as a region separately analyzed in, in the DA2I report. Maybe Stephen, you want to add something? Yes, so thank you. Um, so again, um, we have, th th there is data on, on the Middle East as a whole and on Lebanon, and thanks to the fact that the World Bank, that the OECD, that the, that the World Bank, that the UN has collected it properly. We haven't yet produced a DHY country analysis for Lebanon, but if you feel that would be useful, we'd be more than happy to, to, to produce one for you. And um, I don't remember off the top of my head if Lebanon is holding a voluntary national review next year, I will certainly check on that. Um, one thing that we are looking at and that hopefully we will be able to use shortly is regional development and access to information analyses, really looking across the region as a whole, trying to identify both overall trends, but also how different countries are doing compared to the overall norm. So watch this space and then we'll certainly be happy to try and produce outcomes. Um, clearly, as said before, if you, we're happy to share databases and insofar as these contain Lebanon, we hope they're going to be useful. Great, Stephen, here is incoming question, which is for you. So you demonstrated the statistical analysis from India and Mexico, uh, but what about other countries? Uh, the pandemic shows an increased statistic on internet usage. How do you anticipate it? So th the data that's presented in the DA2I analyses is certainly, it, 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 I, I hesitate to use the word historic, inevitably with international statistics, there's always one or two years lag. And so the hard, hard statistics about internet usage linked to the, the, the coronavirus pandemic will only really show up in a year or two. And however, I think, as you say, it's a question of anticipating things. Yes, I think we are seeing a, it does appear to be that there's a strong increase in internet usage certainly in a lot of countries where it is possible for libraries to offer digital content, we are seeing a huge jump in this. At the same time, we are also seeing the consequence of what happens when people aren't connected. And this isn't just a, a developing country issue. One statistic that's been shared suggested that even in LA County, so Los Angeles, one of the richest cities in the world, a quarter of students don't have sufficient internet access in order to do their homework. So I think, we will see probably an increase in the intensity of usage. So those people who have internet will use it more. Obviously this doesn't help people who don't have the internet. So what we're hoping to see now, and indeed we've just released a pledge on this topic, is that there'll be greater investment in getting more people online. So it's not just the intensity, but also the quality of usage that improves. Yes, thank you for Answering that question, I don't see more questions in the question and answer box. And we have uh, two minutes left uh, of time. And uh, I would like to ask my own question. Uh, you, Stephen, had a, had a great experience now with the library stat of the week uh, posts. Uh, I think we already have 40 or more than 40 of them. And uh, something that was not mentioned that they are actually also shared widely on our social networks. And if you want to reuse them, they have a great design with the main arguments uh, uh, communicated. But uh, what was, what do you think was the, or did you experience any challenges uh, in particular when it comes to use and of data sets and what is available and, and how, can you share a little bit about the practical part of it? So I think probably the biggest challenge is, the biggest challenge is going to be the, 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 the age and the quality of data globally. So as said, um, OECD countries, which are, are tend to be the richest ones, also tend to have a relatively well-developed statistical office and administration. And they're able to gather some really interesting information about issues like social mobility, about issues like, do people feel well informed? What is their level of trust in government in other people? And sadly, a lot of the time this data is lacking from other countries. 
And this is going to be, this is a, an issue because it means that we can't carry out the same analyses more broadly. I think obviously a broader question, and this is certainly something we've come across in the context of the Development and Access to Information Report, is that there are still governments and UN agencies that don't want to make data freely available. And mm -hmm. so, for example, data from the International Telecommunications Union is not always freely available. We know that in some countries it's been a struggle to get governments to publish the library data they hold. And so it means that we can't do quite as much as we want. And um, nonetheless, in other areas, fortunately, there is a relative standardization around publishing in Excel. Um, and so actually, once you can download the data, if you can download it, there's a lot you can do just simply playing around with it without having a statistics degree. Right. I totally join you in some of those challenges, uh, but it's also very good to see, at least uh, for, from the library map of the world experience, that even in those three years, we can see that it's, it's developing, it takes time, it is slowly, uh, but uh, we are on the road of, of really improving uh, year by year. And uh, yeah, so I think it's the end. It's time to finish. And uh, any last comments? No, only that no? You, there's the, there's the um, we put up the, the, the chat. In the chat, you've got the library map um, email address if you, if you have any further questions. We'll be making a recording of the session available on the website. And so, of course, please do get in touch with us. Our, in, our email addresses are all on the IFRA website. So if you have any further questions, don't hesitate. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today and see you next year on the World Statistics Day. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye.